All right, we're switching gears a little bit. Not food chains and food webs so much anymore, although it's definitely related. We're going to look at how matter, and matter is anything, right? Anything that we experience in our, in our ecosystem, in our environments. Um, yeah, anything, organic or inorganic, pretty much. Okay, so uh, matter, th the key phrase here that we're going to consider is that matter cycles in our ecosystem. That means it never starts, it never ends, it just keeps going and going and going. Okay, goes in a circle. A cycle basically means goes in a circle. That means there's no beginning and no end. It just keeps going and going and going. Now this is a, a big blurb here that basically is saying um, that if you look at it, it uses the words abiotic. Whoops. It uses the word abiotic and biotic. Oh, I thought that would delete. Excuse me while I do this. Okay, so it says that matter continually cycles. It goes from the abiotic environment to the biotic environment and back to the abiotic environment again. Now, I think that this picture is maybe a little bit grainy, so I'm going to go to the website, and hopefully that's a little bit better. But take a look at it. What does it start with? I've mentioned that all food chains, all food chains start with what? That's right, a producer, right? It starts with a producer. But we might be able to say that it starts with something even more important. Do you have any ideas? Well, what is this thing right here? That's the sun, right? Is the sun biotic or abiotic? Is it living or non-living? It's non-living, that makes it abiotic. That's right, so that's an abiotic part of our environment. Now this plant, yes, it is living, it is biotic, but what does it need in order to stay alive? It needs sunlight, it needs carbon dioxide, and it needs water. Those are all non-living things. Okay. Also needs some minerals and, and various types of nutrients in order for it to grow well. Okay. All that stuff comes from the ground, and of course the air and the sunlight come from its surroundings, sometimes in the ground, sometimes not. So here's a really simple food chain, right? The grass gets eaten by the grasshopper, which gets eaten by the mouse, which gets eaten by the snake, which gets eaten by the hawk. That's a food chain. Now you can turn any food chain into a cycle by adding in our decomposers. You remember what decomposers do? I mentioned that a couple of videos back. Um, decomposers break down dead and waste materials back into their basic materials, and where do they put them? They put them right back in the soil. So here's, a, here's some decomposers, right? Some mushrooms represents fungus. There's lots of different kinds of decomposers, however. And what it does is it, it will break. So this eagle here, right? When it dies, gets killed, what have you, it gets broken down by this fungus. And when the fungus is done with it, it those basic nutrients and building blocks of all things get put back right into the soil again. And is the soil biotic or abiotic? It is abiotic. That means it's not living. Okay. And then these nutrients and different materials can be used again by our producers and our producers grow again and it starts it all over right things begin and that's how it makes it a cycle so you can make any food chain and any food chain inside a food web into a nutrient cycle cycling of nutrients by adding these guys right here by adding in your decomposers okay so in your notes um this would be the thing to highlight. Sorry about that. It's commercial. So this part right here. Oh, for Pete's sakes. Okay, so this is what I would highlight. You add a decomposer to any food chain. You change it into a ta -da, nutrient cycle. Boom, just like that. Okay. And that is the end of this cycle. Next, we're going to look at another one.